Starting off this countdown, we have the human monkey hybrid. Guys, I wish this was fake, but it's not. So scientists are currently trying to make human monkey hybrids. They have high hopes that these experiments will succeed because monkeys and humans are similar genetically. Spanish biologist Juan Carlos Belmonte is working with monkey researchers in China to perform these experiments. So basically they are mixing human cells into monkey embryos. Their objective is to grow a monkey whose organs are completely made out of human cells. They then would use these animals and their organs for people that need the organs. Of course, this is controversial in a number of ways, as you can imagine. In our number nine spot today, we have bees. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. A lot of us know bees is pretty harmless and kind of cute little pollinators, unless of course you're allergic or terrified, but truthfully, bees normally do a lot more good than harm. That was of course until an experience experiment in the 70s went awry and caused a new crossbred bee. This experiment was to take a regular honeybee and breed it with a bee that was found in Africa that produces a lot more honey, and of course the goal was to produce a manageable bee that would also be able to provide more honey than a regular honeybee would. Well, the bees that came out were a lot less manageable and they didn't even make more honey. After this experiment ended, however, the bees got out into the environment and the 80s saw the beginning of the trouble. These bees are not only aggressive towards other kinds of bees, which which creates a huge problem, but they're also very aggressive towards humans. And when these bees sting, their stinger stays with them so they can sting multiple times. Victims of these swarms receive 10 times as many stings as regular swarms, they react to disturbances 10 times faster, and they will also chase the disturbance a quarter of a mile. These bees have actually caused at least 1,000 deaths, so it's safe to say that this is one experiment gone horribly wrong. Moving on, at number eight, we have the pig human hybrid. Again, you heard me correctly. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in California have created a human pig hybrid. So in 2017, an embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. Then it was taken out and analyzed and the embryo survived and contained some human cells. So their hope is to grow human organs inside of pigs instead of waiting for a donor. Similar to the tests that are being done on the monkeys as I previously mentioned. No animals are safe at this point. In our number seven spot today, we have the wolfin. I wish I never had to say the word wolfin, but unfortunately they do exist. These guys are created when a female common bottlenose dolphin is bred with a male false killer whale. They're extremely rare and have been found in the wild, but unfortunately most of the ones that have existed were bred in captivity. The first recorded wolfin was born at the Tokyo Sea World in 1981, and he very sadly died just 200 days later. Probably a prime example of why they really maybe shouldn't even exist in the first place. The first that was born in the United States that actually miraculously survived was at a sea life park in Hawaii in May of 1985. She ended up having three babies. The first passed away after a few days. The second passed away at the age of nine, but thankfully the third one is still living. In March of last year, both her and her daughter are still alive, but they still remain in captivity. Coming in at number six, we have Ilya Ivanich Ivanov. What a name. But this is the name of the dude that originally tried to create a human chimp hybrid. Ilya was a Russian biologist who did a number of disturbing experiments in the 1920s. He started with crossbreeding animals. So he managed to produce a zebra donkey hybrid, a Z-donk, and a bison cow cross, which is a Zubron, and also crossed rats, mice, guinea pigs, and rabbits together with each other. But he decided to take it further with the human and monkey crossing. In fact, he successfully managed to inseminate three female chimpanzees with human sperm. His experiments were so famous that five women actually offered to carry half ape babies inside of them in the name of science, which thankfully didn't go through. Or if it did, he did it in private with no one else knowing. In our number five spot today, we have farm cattle. In the 1990s, farmers in India were told that if they crossbred their cattle, they'd be able to breed cattle that could produce more milk, which would of course mean more money for them and their families. This should be amazing 
amazing and great, right? Well, considering why we're all here today, I think we all know the answer to that question. Different breeds of bulls were brought in and farmers were expecting great things, but they ended up being stuck with cattle that did produce more milk, but also needed way more higher quality food or else they'd stop producing more milk. And they were less resistant to the local diseases, so they required more veterinary visits. So it's this kind of situation like, yes, they are producing more milk, which will get us some more money, but they also cost us more. And truthfully, most of the times the increased milk production did not outweigh the growing costs. In our fourth spot, we have Hiromitsu Nakuchi. Hiromitsu is a stem cell biologist from Tokyo. Just recently, his experiments have been approved by the government. And let me tell you what he's planning on doing. Basically, he hopes to grow human cells in mice and rats and then transplant those embryos into surrogate animals. So again, another experiment having to do with growing human cells in animals. So his experiment started by injecting some cells into rat and mice embryos. But those rodents have been genetically manipulated so they can't make a pancreas for themselves. But his hope is that the rodents' bodies will use the human cells to then make a pancreas for themselves. Here's the thing. While conducting the experiments, if they find that the rats are starting to develop a human type brain, then they have to stop the experiments on them. It's part of the agreement that he has with the government. They don't want a humanized animal coming into existence. In our number three spot today, we have the beefalo. Okay, so beefalo sounds kind of cute and silly and it also looks pretty normal, so what could be wrong with this one? Well, let's start at the beginning. So, a guy named Charles Buffalo Jones started breeding them in 1906 because the bison population in Arizona at the time was so exceptionally low. So, bison were bred with domestic cattle in order to produce a hardy commercial animal. He ended up just giving up on this and released the animals who were then managed by the state and the numbers remain relatively low because of the limited hunting licenses. Well, when the beefalo found their way into a national park where hunting is banned and there aren't any natural predators, the population began to grow by 50% a year. That's wild! So none of this is necessarily bad, but it's the animal's environmental impact that is really the trouble. First off, they're very thirsty animals and can consume 10 gallons each per trip to a watering hole. So they can obviously clear up a water source pretty quickly. Not to mention the fact that they do their business in the water and how their heavy weight compacts the soil. But basically they have thrown the ecosystem off balance and have pushed out other animals and the insects and plant life around have also been affected. In our second spot we have the breeding gone wrong. If you're a dog lover like Olivia and I then this story is going to make you upset. In 2010 a woman named Julie Leroy was working as an animal control officer when an owner of a pit bull puppy said she didn't want to keep her. When Julie saw the dog she was in complete disbelief. The dog had a squished body, huge jaw, a bad underbite, and was oddly shaped. That's because the dog suffered from short spine syndrome. That's because they got the dog from a backyard breeder who was carelessly breeding a bunch of his dogs together. Thankfully, Julie took the dog in and gave her a loving home. But it's sad to see dogs born like this just from reckless people who only have money on their mind. In our number one spot today, we have lions. In the 1980s, the Chapier Zoo in India started an experimental program where they would breed together a domestic lion, which is a bit smaller and has a less shaggy mane, with an African lion in the hopes that they could be introduced to the wild and help with the dwindling population of wild lions in India. The zoo found two African lions that were being used in a circus and brought them in to breed with their two Asiatic lions. When the cubs were born, it was clear that this was already a mistake as the cubs had severely weak back legs. They were having extreme trouble walking and as they got older, their immune systems started to fail. By 2000, when they had already bred more than 70 of these hybrid lions, they finally decided to stop the program and all of the males were given vasectomies in order to stop any reproduction. There are laws that prohibit them from killing animals, so they were simply just waiting for them to die naturally. When there's a dwindling population of lions, it's insane to me that they wasted 20 years trying to do this when they could have just simply bred the lions that they had. Starting off this countdown, we have the rabbit man. Yes, I'm talking about a human-animal hybrid between a human and a rabbit. So basically, the first successful experiment was done in 2003 in Shanghai. A team of scientists managed to fuse human cells with rabbit eggs. In the United States, scientists have been trying to do the same thing, but their attempts were always unsuccessful. But in Shanghai, they managed to pull it off. 
This experiment was done to see if rabbits could be used to grow cells or tissues for transplant patients. But in the end, they only allowed the human rabbit to develop for a couple of days before they had to destroy it and then harvest it for stem cells. Moving on at number nine, we have the goat human milk mix. Let me just start by saying this experiment is quite interesting to say the least. But basically, scientists have figured a way for goats to produce human breast milk. So basically, scientists transferred human genes for breast milk enzymes and proteins into goat embryos. In the end, they found that the milk the goats were producing was not 100% human, but it contained 60% of the lysosome and lactoferrin found in human milk. Maybe this weird goat human milk is gonna change the future. It could feed and save babies in need. It also means a longer shelf life for this milk. Would you guys ever try this milk? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on at number eight, we have the pigs with human blood. In my last video, I talked about how pigs were used to help create human organs. Well, that's not all. Researchers at Mayo Clinic in Minnesota have managed to create pigs with human blood. Yeah, they have human blood pumping through their veins. Not only that, but some of their cells in the blood merge to create pig-human cell hybrids. Kind of weird, not gonna lie. Hit that thumbs up button if you agree. But scientists are using this to study how viral infections can transfer from animals to humans. In our seventh spot, we have the glow-in-the-dark cats. Scientists have been conducting experiments on cats to study molecules that could stop HIV AIDS. So the virus responsible for HIV in humans is similar to feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV, in cats. So what they did was insert a gene that produces a fluorescent protein called GFP. This is produced naturally in jellyfish, believe it or not. But it's what gives these kitties a green glow. Then they also inserted a gene that blocks the FIV virus into unfertilized eggs of the cat. When the cat gave birth to the kitties, if they glowed green, that meant they also have the anti-FIV gene. They hope that these experiments will one day lead to them finding a way to make humans resistant to HIV. In our sixth spot, we have the human sheep livers. In 2007, scientists at the University of Novato, Reno, claims they managed to grow human livers inside of sheep. So they did this by injecting human stem cells from bone marrow into growing sheep fetuses. Sheep is apparently good for this because their circulatory system is similar to ours. In the end, they said the livers will be made with 20% human cells. They are hopeful that one day this can be used to help grow human organs for those in need of transplant. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the mice with a human brain. In 2005, Irving Westman, a professor at Stanford University and co-founder of the company Stem Cells Inc., was given permission to create a mouse-human hybrid. So what they did was transplant human brain stem cells into the brains of mice. They did this in hopes to study neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. In the first round of tests, they found that the mouse brain consisted of less than 1% of human cells. But in 2010, they were much more successful. That's when they managed to, and I quote, use mouse stem cells to develop sensory hair cells, which could combat human hearing loss. They also managed to make the mice more human in the sense that the mice with the human brain cells were more intelligent than other regular mice. Isn't that crazy? Like their brains were containing certain human cells. Science is crazy. Hit that thumbs up button if you agree. Coming in at number four, we have Oliver the chimpanzee. Now this next story was quite controversial for a number of reasons. But basically there was a chimpanzee named Oliver that wasn't like other chimps. No, he had a lot of human characteristics that made people think that he was indeed a human chimpanzee hybrid. For example, he had more human-like traits. He had a flatter face than other chimpanzees and he walked on two feet instead of all fours. He also preferred human females over female chimpanzees. In fact, a lot of doctors and scientists at the time were convinced he was a humanzee, a human and a chimpanzee. 
Furthermore, renowned Dr. Gordon Gallup from the University of New York said there was reason to suspect that Oliver was a human chimpanzee hybrid. Now, they ended up finding out that his chromosomes matched that of a chimpanzee, not a human, but they never did a full DNA test. So many people think that Oliver was some messed up experiment. In our third spot, we have cow eggs with human cells. In 2008, British researchers were given the okay to conduct some human animal experiments. So they decided to manipulate cow eggs. They took the nucleus of the cow egg, which is the source of the most DNA, and replaced it with the nucleus of a human cell. They then watched the egg develop and multiply. Scientists could then extract the stem cells from this and use it for disease treatments. These experiments were conducted with the hopes to one day find a cure for Parkinson's disease. Moving on to number two, we have the human sheep. Okay, this one has to be the weirdest one on this list. I feel like I said that before already, but just wait and you be the judge. So in 2017, villagers in South Africa were horrified when a sheep gave birth to something that they thought was brought into this world by the devil. The sheep did not look like a sheep or lamb or whatever. Instead, it looked like a half human with hooves. Many people in the village were convinced that bestiality and witchcraft were behind this creature, whereas others believed that it was sent by the devil. Apparently, it was just a stillborn lamb. But still, there's a lot of rumors of someone injecting the sheep with male sperm. And in our number one spot, we have the mouse with the human ear. In the late 90s, three doctors started doing experiments on creating human body parts in a lab. One of the things they managed to do was grow a human ear on the back of a mouse. So they did this by creating an ear-shaped scaffolding and putting cells of cartilage from a cow on it. They then put the mouse under anesthetic and placed this ear thing under the skin. Crazily enough, the mouse's body fed the cow cartilage cells. The scaffolding dissolved, and the mouse was growing this artificial shape of a human ear. But it was only the outside of an ear. There was no eardrum. But they did this in order to help plastic surgeons that have a hard time reconstructing human ears for their patients. So they would create this ear on the mouse and then graft it onto a person. Number 10 with Oliver. Oliver was a chimpanzee that was acquired by American trainers in 1960. Now, they instantly thought something was strange about him. His face was too flat, his hair was too thin, his eyes were a strange colour, and he also did something that no other chimp does. Oliver walked upright on two legs. This led his owners to speculate that he was the product of crossbreeding between a human and a chimp known as a humanzee. It might sound crazy, but Dr. Gordon Gallup of the University of New York said there was reason to suspect that Oliver may be a human chimpanzee hybrid. Humans and chimps share at least 99% of their basic biological chemistry. Oliver died in 2012 with the scientific community deeming him to be a normal chimp, although a full complete DNA test was never done. Next up at number 9 now we have the human pig chimera. In January 2017, scientists announced they had created a real life human pig hybrid. The embryos they made were only a tiny bit human, less than 0.00. .00 0.01%. The rest was all pig, but crucially, it was a hybrid. They only lasted for 28 days, but the scientists felt it was a step in the right direction. They hoped that eventually, animals could even grow entire human organs ready for use. How does this one make you guys feel? I know it can be pretty divisive. At number 8 now, we have the Ningyo. The Ningyo is the Japanese equivalent of a mermaid, and in one special shrine, people claim they have a specimen. It's been dated to over 1,400 years old, and bears a striking resemblance to the artwork depicting these creatures. Some visitors to the shrine claim that it's made out of stone or wood, but that's incorrect. It is genuine organic matter. Here's the thing though, other people say it's most likely advanced taxidermy, with people splicing them together after death. What do you guys think though? At number 7 now, we have the mouse ear. In 2016, Japanese scientists announced they had grown a human ear on the back of a rat. They used human stem cells injected into the rat. The stem cells developed into human cartilage tissue and molded in the rat into the shape of an ear. Now, the aim for all of this is to be able to help children with facial abnormalities and give them fully grown body parts from their own DNA so it won't get rejected. Coming in at number 6, 
6th now we have the half sheep. In June 2017 villagers from South Africa said that the offspring of a local sheep was sent by the devil but to others though it looked like a human sheep hybrid. When the villagers called in expert help even the chief director of the veterinary services said that he thought it looked oddly human. The vets then took it away to study. They suspected it was due to a fever in the sheep's mother that caused the deformity but the village elders maintained that it was sent by the devil and was born after a coupling between a man and a sheep. Coming at number 4 now we have the Russian lamb. This claim comes from a farm in southern Russia in 2015 where a sheep gave birth to a lamb that basically looks like an old man to be honest. See for yourself though. The video shows the lamb not long after it was born making sort of odd grunting noises as the mother tried to clean it. The farmer was shocked and some of the locals thought it was actually a human sheep hybrid. The general consensus though is that it's just a facial deformity as the rest of the lamb seemed to be in working order. Moving on to number 3 now we have the Thai cow. In 2010 a story emerged from Thailand of a cow that had given birth to a very human like creature. The local people poured baby powder on the body and burned incense in the hopes of cleansing the area of evil. The mouth, head and stomach were certainly quite human looking while the hooves were clearly cow like. Although the local people think this is some evil hybrid there's a good chance it is just a deformed cow calf. I also think the online hysteria was made worse with these pictures because of the baby powder. It really made this thing look even creepier. At number 2 now we have the sheep with human livers. In 2005 researchers at the University of Nevada created sheep with organs containing millions of human cells. They announced they could grow livers in sheep that were 20% human. As with other examples we've talked about, the researchers used embryonic stem cells and they did it for the same reason, to eventually develop fully grown human organs on demand. And finally at number 1 we have the human mouse. The results of this experiment were announced in 2015. Scientists thought they had found the DNA sequence responsible for making human brains bigger than other animals. So they took the human gene for this and the chimp chimpanzee version of the gene and put them into mice. The ones with the chimpanzee brain DNA didn't really have much bigger brains but the ones with human sequences grew 12% bigger. The mice would not have gone on to achieve human levels of intelligence but these human mouse hybrid brains could be a step in that direction. Starting off this countdown we have the Zubron. This is a cross between domestic cattle and the European bison. In fact the European bison aka the wizened was once threatened by extinction but now they were making a comeback. The Zubron were first created by Leopold Wallicki in 1847, but scientists didn't breed the first fertile Zubron until 1960. In fact, after World War I, a lot of people believed that the Zubron was going to replace domestic cattle because of their low susceptibility to disease and their durability. All throughout the 1950s and 60s, scientists were working on creating these creatures in labs. Over the course of 16 years, 71 Zubrons were born. Experiments continued to run on these animals until the late 1980s. That's when the experiments were shut down. One of the reasons being they were unsatisfied with the results. But also they were scared that the Zubron would crossbreed with the endangered wild wizent and then contaminate the whole gene pool. Now there's just one herd left and it's located in a national park. Moving on to number 9 we have the human rodent hybrid. A stem cell biologist from Tokyo has been trying to grow human cells in mice and rats and then transplant those embryos into surrogate animals. So his experiments start by injecting some cells into rat and mice embryos. But those rodents have been genetically manipulated so they can't make pancreases for themselves. His hope is that the rodents bodies will use the human cells to then make a pancreas. Here's the thing though, while conducting the experiments if they find that the rats are starting to develop a human type brain then they have to stop the experiments on them. It's part of the agreement he has with the government, they don't want a humanized animal coming into existence. Still we can say that there are some humanized rodents out there. Moving on to number 8 we have the Leopon. Lions, no tigers, but leopards, oh my. See what I did there? A leopon is a mix between a male leopard and a female lion. If you thought leopards or lions alone were scary, wait until you take a look at this bad boy. So the leopon literally looks like it's fake. It has the head of a lion, but the body of a leopard. They are beautiful, but imagine being hunted down by one of those. No thank you. In fact, they can grow to be larger than their full grown leopard father. Also, they can last 20 years in the wild. 
On average, leopards live to be around 23 years old and lions only 13. So that's pretty impressive. The first reference to the leopon was made in the first century, but it wasn't until 1910 that someone saw one in real life and it was actually credible. But don't be fooled, leopards and lions aren't out there mating with each other. These animals were produced in captivity. They're very unlikely to occur naturally in the wild. In our seventh spot today, we have the Jeep or Geep. I don't know how you pronounce it, but I'm not talking about the car here. This is a mixture between a goat and a sheep. It's pretty cute, not gonna lie. But breeding the two can be a very risky game. Very few babies are carried to term, and even fewer manage to survive birth. Those that do survive have a bunch of genetic abnormalities. But people still cross the two together, which is sad because chances are most of the time it'll have a negative outcome. Coming in at number six, we have the hybrid lions gone wrong. This is a sad example of breeding gone wrong. In 2006, nearly two dozen crossbred lions in Northern India were dying after they developed a mysterious disease. The disease was a result of inbreeding and a weakened gene pool. Nearly 80 lions were affected by this. The lions being born had weak hind legs and had difficulty walking and couldn't even run. They also had failing immune systems. Now, there's a wildlife law in India which prohibits the killing of animals. So basically, they just had to wait for these lions to die a slow, painful death on their own. It's a very tragic case of breeding gone wrong. Those poor lions. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the see-through frog. Scientists in Japan have managed to create a frog that has see-through skin, which is really freaking creepy if you ask me. So they created this frog by crossing two kinds of recessive color mutant frogs together. They did this through artificial insemination. And the offspring ended up producing frogs with translucent skin. Now there's a lot more to it than that, but that's just the simplified way to describe it. Now they actually have a good reason for doing this. Having frogs with visible organs means you don't need to dissect them for medical research. Instead, you can just observe by looking through them. So this reduces the need for dissecting and killing innocent frogs. In our fourth spot today, we have the glow-in-the-dark cats. No, I am not making this up. It is a real thing. Basically, these glow-in-the-dark cats were created in an attempt to stop HIV AIDS. So the virus responsible for HIV in humans is similar to the feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV. So what they did was insert a gene that produces a fluorescent protein called GFP. This is produced naturally in jellyfish, but it's what gives these kitties a green glow. Then they also inserted a gene that blocks the FIV virus into unfertilized eggs of the cat. When the cat gave birth to the kitties, if they glowed green, that meant they also had the anti-FIV gene. They hope that these experiments will one day lead to them finding a way to make humans resistant to HIV. In our third spot today, we have the infertile pink bullworm. In 2005, the pink bullworm was becoming a huge problem in cotton farming. These invasive pests lay eggs on cotton balls. And then once they hatch, the larvae eat the seeds and damage the cotton fibers. It was getting so bad that scientists came up with this really weird way to get rid of them. Basically, they created sterile pink bullworms. They did this by treating a bunch of moths with radiation. The radiation would damage their reproduction cells, but it wouldn't kill the insect. That way, when they encountered a normal pink bullworm and the two mated, bam! it would create an infertile pink bullworm. So for four years, two billion pink bullworm moths were released into Arizona's cotton fields. They literally would fly an airplane above the fields and then drop millions of these moths down onto the crops. And thankfully it worked. Imagine if their plan didn't work, there would be billions more pink bullworms out there. It could have destroyed the crops completely. Even the scientists admitted that it was a very risky move. Coming in at number two, we have the killer bees. Did you know that killer bees were accidentally created by scientists? See, this kind of stuff scares me. Like what else have scientists created by accident? Basically in the 1950s, a biologist was commissioned by the Brazilian government to create a species of bees that would increase honey production. But along the way, things went wrong. The biologist himself didn't have much experience with animal breeding. In the end, bees from Southern Africa and local Brazilian honeybees made it and it produced these angry killer bees. And then of course, thousands of these killer bees accidentally escaped. Now they get their name because when pissed off, they have been known to chase people down for more than a quarter mile. And on top of that, their stings are very painful. 
So these bees were literally created in a lab by accident. And in our number one spot today, we have the rabbit man. For this one, we have a hybrid between a human and a rabbit. Again, I'm not making this up. The first successful experiment was done in 2003 in Shanghai. A team of scientists managed to fuse human cells with rabbit eggs. In the United States, scientists have been trying to do the same, but their attempts have been unsuccessful. But in Shanghai, they managed to pull this off. This experiment was done to see if it could be used to grow cells or tissues for transplant patients. But in the end, they only allowed the human rabbit to develop for a couple of days before they had to destroy it and then just harvest it for its stem cells. Either way, they still created a human rabbit hybrid. Starting off this countdown, we have the Growler Bear. The Growler Bear, or the Pizzly Bear, is a cross between a polar bear and a brown grizzly bear. This actually happened naturally in the wild, which is kind of hard to believe. Basically, because of climate change destroying the bear's habitats, they started breeding with each other out of desperation, which is actually pretty sad. It's believed that the first Growler Bear was discovered in 2006. On April 16th, 2006, a hunter named Jim Martell was out hunting when he captured a growler bear. At first, he thought it was just a polar bear, but officials took a look at it and noticed it had strange features. Later, it was determined to be a growler bear or pizzly bear. It's really funny. To, it's really funny to say. In our ninth spot, we have a Zorse. Any guesses as to what this animal is mixed with? Well, it's a mix between a zebra and a horse or sometimes a donkey too. Other people refer to them as zebula or zebrul or a zebra mule. These animals were created after crossbreeding a male zebra with a female horse. The offspring look more like a horse than a zebra, but they still got the identifying stripes. The first Zorse was created during the 19th century by Charles Darwin. Now they are still around to this day, but they are extremely rare. This is because Zorses are infertile or sterile. They can't reproduce on their own. So the only way to get more of these bad boys is to get someone to crossbreed them themselves. Moving on to number eight, we have the Jag Lion or Jag Leon, I don't know. It's a kind of a weird name, not gonna lie, but this animal is a cross between a Jaguar and a lion. And these are actually naturally born. The first Jag Lion was unintentionally bred. It happened when a lion and a jaguar coexisted in the same zoo together. They were raised together and you know, one thing led to another and boom, baby jag lion. Not gonna lie, these things are beautifully terrifying. They are so unique and cool looking, but also I would never wanna come face to face with one. Now, let me share with you a quick little love story between a jaguar named Diablo and a lion named Lola. The two were raised side by side and were inseparable. When Lola got mature, they kept Diablo away from her so that they would never mate. But whenever they were apart, both animals would grow depressed. It got so bad to the point where Lola wouldn't even eat. So they brought them back together and bada bing bada boom, they had two babies together. So cute. Moving on to number seven, we have the human Z. It is so weird and uncomfortable putting this one on the list. But a human Z is a cross between a human and a chimpanzee. Yeah, I already know what you're thinking, but no, not that. Let me explain. Serious attempts have been made throughout the years to cross a chimp with a human. Since we're so similar in a genetic way, people believe that it's possible to do this. Ilya Ivanish Ivanov was the first person to attempt to create a human-chimp hybrid. I believe he started in 1918 and continued these experiences throughout the 1920s. During that time, the Soviet Union was also doing the same experiments. In 2019, rumor has it that a team of researchers from the Salk Institute from Biological Studies in the US successfully completed this. It's kind of creepy, I know. In our sixth spot, we have the Iron Age Pig. This is a big, mean old pig, literally. So the Iron Age Pig is a cross between a domestic pig and a wild boar. That's just like so wrong to me on so many levels. Like, poor little Miss Piggy. Now, look at this thing. It's huge and looks tough and mean. In fact, they are considered very hostile animals. It's because wild boars are typically more aggressive. That's one of the traits that gets passed along to their offsprings. Now they get their name because this pig has many characteristics of domesticated animals from the Iron Age period. Hello, 
There you go, Iron Age pig. It's quite fascinating. These pigs are generally bred in Europe for the sole purpose of selling and eating them. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the green sea slug. As strange as this one is, it's actually really interesting. Honestly though, this has to be the weirdest hybrid on this list. And that's because it's part animal and part plant. Yeah, it's a mix between a sea slug and algae. Yeah, yeah, algae. This sea slug was going around eating algae and eventually the algae became part of its DNA. It's very strange. Soon green sea slugs were born and contained chlorophyll, just like a plant. In fact, this is the first animal able to make chlorophyll like a plant. They literally can turn solar energy into food. Again, it's quite weird, but also fascinating. In our fourth spot, we have the wolfin, which is really fun and funny to say. So a wolfin is a mix between an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale. In fact, these are considered very, very rare. The first recorded wolfin was born in 1981 in Tokyo SeaWorld, but sadly he passed away after 200 days. Now the first wolfin born in the US was at Sea Life Park in Hawaii in 1985, but she had trouble reproducing. Her baby wolfins sadly passed away. Some say they have seen wolfins out in the wild, but these sightings have never been confirmed. But if you do see one, it's very rare. Coming in at number three, we have the Enviro pig. Okay, this one, I take it back. This one is probably the weirdest one on this list. Basically, an Enviro pig is an environmentally friendly pig. Basically, pig's excrements are high in phosphorus. This phosphorus then ends up in lakes and rivers and oceans and can cause a boom of algae. So scientists were like, hey, let's just breed a pig with less toxic waste. And that's what they did. Enviro pigs are pigs with up to 65% less phosphorus in their excrements. This pig was first created in 1999 at the University of Guelph's farm in Canada. This pig had its phytase gene attached to a piece of mouse DNA. Basically, in the end, it made the pig produce an enzyme to help it better digest plant phosphorus, which is a nutrient in its feed. Voila, from there, Enviro pigs were born. In our second spot, we have the Belgian super cow. Now, when they said super cow, they weren't joking, because take a load of this cow. It's monstrous. As many of you guys know, cows are my favorite animal, but this one terrifies me. It's massive, like look at its muscles. I'm sorry, but no animal should be as ripped as that. So basically this super cow was created back in the 1800s when Belgian scientists and farmers mixed native cattle with shorthorn cattle. Then over the time they would select the biggest and strongest offsprings of each variety and get them to breed together. So on and so on, bam, you got this super cow, which is definitely the biggest and strongest. So maybe let's stop doing that because this cow is soon gonna get too big for its own good and like take over the world or something. And in our number one spot, we have the human pig hybrid. Yes, this is a real thing. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in California have created a human pig hybrid. Now you're probably wondering why on earth would they do this? Well, they did this in hopes that one day they could grow human organs inside of pigs and other animals instead of waiting for a donor. So in 2017, an embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. Then this was taken out and analyzed. And the embryo survived and contained some human cells. Now they're going to figure out if pig embryos can handle enough human cells to create human organs. It's very creepy in my opinion. Right. At number 10, we have Kama. So we're gonna start off with Kama. This is a cross between a camel and a llama or a comma, you could say. And while you may be thinking, okay, this isn't too wacky, I need to remind you the stats of both parents of this creature. A llama weighs about 130 to 200 kilograms, or 300 to 450 pounds. In comparison, a dromedary, or one-humped camel, weighs 400 to 600 kilograms. That's 900 to 1300 pounds, which is twice the size. So now we are all thinking how I will tell you that this blend was done sciencey through artificial means and the biggest success story was Rama or Rama the Kama or Kama, Rama the Kama, who lived to be 14 years old. And now that we've seen a Kama, let's look at another llama hybrid, the Swama. This fake one. Ah oh, yes, majestic. I can imagine it now flying before nosediving when it sees I have snacks. 
stunning. But on to another real one at number nine, Narluga. While this one wasn't caught on camera, we do have a photo of the skull. And there have been photoshopped interpretations of a Narluga. The skull was given to researchers by an Inuit hunter that was part of a group that caught three of these whales during a substance hunt. The blend of narwhal and beluga was described as uniformly gray with pectoral fins shaped like a beluga's and tails shaped like a narwhal's on sciencenews.org. It was confirmed through DNA analysis that the mother was a narwhal and the father was a beluga, and these have been said to not been spotted since this skull was discovered. But it is important to note that humans don't frequently visit the Arctic to whale watch for research or otherwise, so keep that in mind. And yes, I did promise it, have a funny photoshopped animal. This is a beluga horse hybrid, and again, majestic. But I'm kind of like judgy of the balance because it's kind of hard to believe it's like a bipedal animal but with has no arms. So like how would the balance work? I can barely balance with my two arms. Imagine the like, it's called a belugars. You can name it for yourself if you like, but what if it falls forward? And then have another uh, aquatic arctic find, the penguin. This one's honestly creepy and it looks kind of like the villain in a story. <laughs> so let's get back to the facts. At number eight, we have a hinny. And why you think hinny is just my bad impersonation of RuPaul? Well, you're right, but it's something else as well. You may have heard of a mule, but a hinny is the other hybrid equine with similar parentage. Both a mule and a hinny are the result of breeding a horse with a donkey, but a mule has a horse as a mother and a hinny has a donkey as a mother. Let that sink in. Now, both tend to live longer than their parents and are more resistant to disease, but mules are more popular since they tend to be stronger and have better endurance. And now that I've told you about hennies, let's look at this other fake blended creation, another equine, the horse seal. Moment of silence for how funny this one looks. That's one of my faves. At number seven, we have Zonky. So if Henny wasn't wild enough for you here, for real life, have a Zonky. A blend of a zebra and a donkey, and yeah, it's real. Quite rare though, because it's not as fertile of a species. Also because donkeys and zebras don't have the same number of chromosomes, so very rare. They look like their donkey parent in their physical stature and their zombie parent with their patterned fur, so AKA a striped donkey. And while they are rare, they happen every once in a while when there's a love affair between a zebra and a donkey, two equine species unlike in chromosomes in some fair zoo where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. Just Romeo and Juliet, but with the donkey and a zebra, that was weird. Eh, take it. And it's not as dramatic as Romeo and Juliet, but let me have my moment here, okay? Here's your photo of something else. It's a shorse, shark horse. If this was running at you, what would you do? Let's go on to number six, a leopon. So you've heard of a liger or a tigon, but what about this fanciful cat? It's a cross between a lioness and a leopard. This is one type of cross that's most likely happening in captivity, but not unheard of in the wild. This resulting look is a cat nearly the size of a lion with shorter legs like a leopard, and they have spots like a leopard's but are paler, more like brown instead of black, and males grow short manes, not the big luscious ones. And honestly, they look unreal and kind of fake, as if a lion was spray painted with jaguar spots and mane was given like a bit of a haircut, but super cool. And you know what else is cool? This line crossed between a lion and a guinea pig. A guinea lion. I'm trying to do an accent, I don't know what it is. I can't really imagine being afraid of it because like, look at the cute face, like no. Oh, but also look at this cute one, a squix. Just, just got, gosh darn adorable. But let's move on to number five, Jeep, or Geep. No, I'm not talking about the car Jeep. This is spelled G-E-E-P, and I was probably right the second time saying it's a Geep. This hybrid is a chimera. In short, any Geep has four parents because it's the result of a combination of goat and sheep embryos. This mix of embryos is then put in the womb of a sheep or a goat until it's born. A successful Geep that was born had patches of sheepish wool and goatish hair. And whenever these are a success, they aren't able to have babies because goats and sheep have different numbers of chromosomes, as I've said before with the zonkey. But another break from science talk, look at this, a dunny. It's so fluffy. It's amazing and it's from my wildest dreams and I want 10 of them. On to number four, a zoe. This is spelled D-Z-O or D-Z-O. The zoe is a hybrid of a yak and a cow. And here's a yak for reference and here's a cow for reference and then the resulting zoe. 
Some people call it a yakao, which I think is great because it has a really nice ring to it, kind of like kachao. Anyways, Azo has a face similar to a cow, but has larger horns, and it is larger than both of its parents. And my favorite fact that it, it can survive at an altitude of over 10,000 feet. Zhao's have pulmonary artery pressure that's low, which means it can survive breathing in air without risking pulmonary hypertension, aka it has very low blood pressure, so the arteries have less problems. And you know what would give me less problems? Having a spowl, this beautiful fake creature. It's a spider owl. One, it has better eyeliner than me, and two, is it spider sized or owl sized? I kinda wanna know because I would take both, but for different reasons. On to number three, a growler bear. And this blend is becoming increasingly more common, likely due to climate change. Grizzly bears are moving further north into polar bear territory, and the two are mingling. One example looks like a grizzly in its face shape and its paws, but has mostly white color that polar bears are known for, because polar bears are white. And what is uncommon is the pair. <laughs> this is a penguin bear hybrid about the size of a teddy bear and probably really great at catching salmon. Yes, it's fake. Slightly more common is the bowl, an owl bear hybrid. I said bowl, I meant bowel. An owl bear hybrid that is super jacked but wise at the same time. Again, fake. Still adorable. On to number two, another real one, the wolfin. A wolfin is the result of a false killer whale breeding with a bottlenose dolphin. This and this. Now, this one is a bit misleading. A false killer whale is technically a dolphin species, but it's still a staggering pairing. A wolfin is much bigger than a bottlenose dolphin and a bit darker too. This pairing has been seen in captivity as well as in the wild, and a cool story is that there's a pair of parents of a wolfin, and they were both actually in an Adam Sandler movie, Fifty First Dates. So the mother of the wolfin was Punaheli, and the father was Anui. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry, I tried. Here's another fake one, an elephant manatee, or fanatee if you will, kind of brings snorkeling to a new level, and I can almost picture a fanatee just swinging its trunk and using it as a propeller to go forward. Kind of a funny visual. And I'll throw in another one, here's a sharkopotamus. I already knew that a hippo could crush like a four foot tall person in their jaws, so like adding that kind of like, it's kind of, if that was in real life, I'd be afraid of it, but thank you for that, Kiparama, for providing that visual. But let's go on to number one, scary animal hybrid. Killer bees. Now, this is a bee that was originally a hybrid of the African lowland honeybee with various other European honeybees. This cross became known as the Africanized bee. It was produced originally with the hopes of creating a bee with higher honey production, which is great intent, but instead it resulted in a more defensive bee. Victims of killer bee stings tend to receive 10 times more stings than from European honeybees, and during the original process of hybridizing, 26 swarms escaped the quarantine where they were produced in Brazil. And that was back in 1957, and the hybrid was spotted in North America by 1985, and the south of Texas by 1990. So, that's real. But let's go on to something else. This is a hybrid of a ferret and a duck. So obviously a dare it, right? <laughs> And uh, well, that's all I have for you. Thanks again for Gitmarama for letting me share his awesome Photoshop skills with you all, and thank you for watching. Which one do you think was the most unbelievable to you of the real ones? And then which Photoshop animal do you wish was real? Personally, the penguin freaked me out with its teeth, but I would love to see a bowel in real life. But that's just me. I've been your host, Abs Kelly. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. And until next time, have a good one. Mm -hmm.